Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today we're gonna be trying to reformat a couple of hard drives or actually first we need to figure out why they aren't working these I got from a subscriber Cor who sent me these from the Netherlands there is a good chance that they are formatted to 520 bytes uh, it might also be something else because these are SSDs um, but we're gonna try and see what we can figure out and to do that we are, are here on this Hewlett Packard and it's the DL560 generation 8 which is a 4 CPU uh, system doesn't matter for this but um, it's very nice and silent so um, I can yell over it and I don't have to yell very high so on this I have installed Microsoft Server 2022 it's in trial version <laughs> But we're going to be trying out a small disk utility called SD3 utility, which also runs on the Windows now. It, um, I think it only used to be run under Linux, but it is also available for Windows. So here we have, uh, there's a label here. It's an IBM 300 gigabyte SSD Fastplatte, which means that it comes from Germany. <laughs> Fastplatte is hard drive on German. 2.5 zones. <laughs> Uh, that must be inches <laughs> SAS hot swap and it has the IBM model number uh, 98Y2625 and it's probably out of a DS8800 mit ramen I don't know what that is not gonna look it up but that's probably the system that it came out of uh, I think this might have come from a part supplier like a broker and uh, that would be my best guess over here we have another um, these are Hitachi drives isn't it should I just look that up that model number there I think I'll look that up and see what it is it's kind of an Hitachi it's an HG ST and it's the ultra star SSD 400 M and it's an SSD and type of flash memory MLC and it can do about 385 megabyte write speed and 495 megabyte read speed and it can do about 24,000 IOs I'm sure these came out of a very expensive IBM storage system uh, those long trays usually means enterprise good quality uh, I've never seen any long trays in anything cheap <laughs> Then we need to mount it on an, um, in a Hula packet tray and uh, this was the one that Core also sent me so thank you very much Core. So we're gonna put that in there and I'm gonna put the screws in. The issue with these enterprise drives out of storage systems are that they're very often uh, formatted in 520 bytes instead of 512 bytes. 512 bytes is what a normal system will use something like Windows would very much prefer 512 bytes but uh, to make it proprietary you have uh, storage companies that, that reformat the drive to 520 bytes and uh, so that you can't just put in anything so you you, you need to, to do some stuff before you can you can put in a drive so you, you can't just go and and get like any drive and just put that in there and think that everything is good you have to go and purchase their extra expensive drive so uh, yeah let's see what happens when we put this in another thing that uh, someone mentioned in a video was that this tray was a ripoff a, uh, a cheap Chinese copy and, and apparently they might be right because this tray is different from this one so disk manager does not exactly see anything uh, nothing has popped up in here let's see if device manager sees it disk drives Hewlett Packard volume okay I might uh, run into the issue that the rate controller is not just directly passing it through so on um, IBM slash Lenovo servers you have the mega rate uh, storage manager that you can use inside of Windows here 
on Hewlett Packard you have a HPE Smart Storage Administrator HPE SSA and I've downloaded that and I have installed that so it's right here it is the RAID controller which is the P420i and there is a big fat issue here and it says that this drive that I put in here the physical drive does not support RAID and is not uh, exposed to the OS it cannot be used for this configuration on this system Oh, that is irritating, but apparently it sees it. But we do kind of get help on what is going on here. Logical physical block size. So it's set to 528 bits instead of 512. Uh, this is also one of the sizes that they use to mess with you. So uh, yeah, we're definitely on to the right thing here. It's, uh, it's formatted to the wrong logical block size. Okay, there we are. Now I have the Hewlett Packard logical volume that's uh, from the RAID controller and I have the IBM disk and it was no problem whatsoever and that's a big fat lie because um, yeah I had to do some ninja tricks to get that IBM drive to pop up in here. We can also see it here in the disk manager. Let's just remove that one. It makes it easier. So let's try and see what happens if we try to do anything with this drive. We get an IO error here. The request could not be performed because IO blah blah blah. Yeah, it, there is something wrong with that one for sure. So, uh, but I want to show you what I did. It was kind of a <laughs> an ugly ninja trick. So as you can see, uh, this is the boot drive and the other drive I've moved it over here and I did that because we need to take the cover off inside here there are five drives in the front here and on a rate controller internal rate controller which is down here it will do four drives per per channel so one of the channels is not connected here that's just sitting there the other one is so I don't know how many the first channel takes as there is four drives it could potentially take the first four drives and then the second channel which is the one that is disconnected could take the last one so i pop the drive in at the last position can i see it on this label there's drive one two three four five but it doesn't say how they are divided in the rate controller or in the back plane it's one big back plane so what i did i popped out the cable here it's also disconnected down here i popped in a new cable <laughs> which is this one which goes into a hewlett packard hba i did try with a normal lsi hba but yeah i got a i got a boot error it wouldn't boot up with that one so so we had to go for a hewlett packard one so that one is in there now so I have um, the IBM is on an HPA and the boot drive is on the rig controller. <laughs> Ugly hack. In the Hewlett Packard Enterprise Smart Storage Administrator, it looks like this. We have the rig controller, but that doesn't see much. It only has that one uh, drive. But if we go down here in other devices, we see that now we have the rig controller and we have this is an HP H2220 host bus adapter and that one sees an, another drive and it also sees that it's <laughs> a logical 528 and a 512 physical block size. It doesn't totally agree with the rate controller on, on that last one. I think the rate controller saw, what's that, 4 kilobytes? Yeah. But now we can see if we can do something with this. So this uh, utility, the Linux SCSI Generic Driver SG, mm. is at this sg.danny.cz. This guy is clearly a programmer and not a designer. So I think we need to go to the utility here. Let's see. Normally you would press here and you would be going down there, but well, that doesn't work. So we need to uh, scroll down. There's a lot of information on here. Uh, all the backstory and drivers and a lot of stuff that I don't know diddly squat about but there is see the SG3 utility page and there is Red Hat and Windows uh, things in there so if we go down there we get an even longer page and if we go further, very far down there we get some stuff if we continue we get some Windows stuff. 
So um, table six SG3 utility window zip files and um, I have downloaded uh, that file and that file and it's called 1.47. I downloaded the utility and I downloaded all the manual stuff. So um, I have those already, just wanted to show you where I got it. I have all the utility here and I have the help file. And now I need to go get some help. Okay, I'm trying to run the program in the command line, but I run into the first issue. I tried to run an SG scan, which should uh, list the drives. But as soon as I do that, I get a, an error code. Let's just move that out of the way. That the DLLCYG win one has not been found. So we need to go find that one. Hmm. Okay, so I, I found that on the dangerous internet and I, um, I downloaded it and I have copied it in here as well. So now when we run this SG scan we get some more information. Let's see if we can't get some bigger text as well. So there we are. It actually sees our drives. It gives them kind of like le Linux uh, drive letters out here. PD0 and PD1. PD1 is the one that we have to mess with. Um, I was just finding the comments that uh, led me to this. So in, in that regard, a uh, shout out to Luke Eastputs for bringing me on to that this was available for Windows and he has also given me the command that I have to put in here to, uh, to format the drive there and my printer has eaten the last little bit but we'll figure that out. <laughs> so this is the line that uh, Luke suggested. I, um, I downloaded as well the uh, the instructions I have all the helps files here and if we go into the the help file on the format uh, it's it's long <laughs> I've opened it more than once but there's a lot of help to what we can do here and ah there is a lot of information here but there is that dash V on there V and it's down here increase the level of mm, I don't think we need that because last time I did this, I have actually done this video before where I installed Linux on the machine and I, um, I reformatted 24 drives that uh, was, they were formatted as 520 bytes and I reformatted them to 512 bytes. That worked out, but I don't think we need the V thing. I didn't do that last time. So we're gonna try and not put in the V thing here. Yeah, let's see what it says about that. Okay, let's see. 10 seconds to a bar, yeah, okay, it's gonna do something for us. Format will start in five seconds. Format has started. And this could take a while. So block size is 528. That's the one that we hope to get changed and apparently these they are advertised at 300 gigabyte drives but the model number suggests that they might be a 400 gigabyte drive that has been downsized to get more security so let's see what it says when it's done formatting oh we do actually get some progress here uh, it, it tells us how long it has ever once in a while and the time is way off, but it says that it's 5.24 over here. I have no idea why the time is off. Okay, that was stupid. Uh, right now it says um, 6.18, but I uh, had it sitting here and I could see the numbers go down and then it stopped here at 22. But that was just because uh, that was outside of view and it completed without me even noticing it. So uh, yeah, meh. But let's see if we, uh, Let's see if we get any drives now. It, it's still there, okay. And here we have it in here. Oh, we can initialize drive. GPG, yes. That works, that wasn't too hard. Mm, I think we should take the drive out and put it over and see if how the brake controller likes it now. It should be hot plug, so let's just out with you. It, it's pissed at me. I have a RAM problem as well. Some block. There. So it disappeared from there. Let's see if it pops up in here. 
Rake controller, these two drives. It hasn't updated yet. Refresh. There, <laughs> it's it's up there. And it's happy. Shh. And it's happy with it now. Now it's uh, 512 E and four kilobytes. It's still 300 gigabytes though, so those 400 gigabytes that someone was suggesting is probably not so. That wasn't too hard. So I prepared the, the second drive. Uh, same thing, it's also a 300 gigabyte SSD. Hitachi, so we're gonna pop that in. This should be one of those copy trays. It looks kind of okay, but the thing over here does look different. Can try and refresh here. Refresh. We see three. It has uh, popped up down here. Uh, okay, it says it's not, uh, 292 gigabytes and it's 300 gigabytes up here. So what we do is <laughs> we did get eight gigabytes of more storage. Um, that's fine. So let's go back. That must be the new drive. Let's see online. We get an error. Cool. So let's uh, let's scan this. SG scan. So now we have. It must be because the drive that I have reformatted and put over into the break controller is not being passed through to the operating system as as yet. So. Uh, yeah, we have the second drive here and we can we can format that. It has gotten the same name as the other one. So we'll just do that. We can see that it's formatted to 528 bytes. So we are gonna redo that to 512 and it's gonna start in five seconds. So what did we learn? Well, um, it seems that if you have a rate controller, you can't do this except if the brake controller will permit you to pass through the drive to the operating system without doing any stuff to it. Some rate controllers will do that. They will kind of act like HPAs and um, yeah, then it might work. I had to put in an HPA in this server so that I could get around the rate controller. And it's not because the rate controller is not good. It's because it's too smart. It sees that it's not able to use this drive. If it was really smart, they would have put some functionality into it so that it could format these drives. That would be very neat to have the rate controller power up and say, hey, you have installed a drive, let's reformat it so that you can use it. They haven't done so. It's probably because they're making sure that no one does it to them. It turned out to be fairly easy to uh, reformat these drives. And we also learned that this works in Windows and I'm using the server versions. Server 2022 is what I'm using for this. I showed you where to get the SG3 utility and that it needed a DLL file that I was also able to find on the internet and just download and, and put in the same folder as the other files and then there was no issues whatsoever. I'm just running them from a folder inside my temp directory. See colon backslash temp slash SG3 utility something something. And then um, that worked great. I think that's about it for this video. If you wouldn't mind, please do uh, give this video a like. Um, it always helps. It brings me in a good mood. <laughs> and um, yeah, I would like to promote my Patreon a little bit. Core, who sent me these two hard drives, is a patron. And on top of that, he also sent me awesome toys to play with and make like this video, sending me these two drives that he couldn't figure out how to use. And now I've done a video and I'm sure that he can figure out the rest. No problems whatsoever. On Patreon, I do a weekly WhatsApp video every Sunday. I am um, with my phone, I go around and I tell all my patrons what I've been up to this weekend. Not including this video because this one I'm filming um, on a Wednesday because it's a Christmas holiday here and I have the time off and can do stuff in the middle of the week. It's awesome. <laughs> Other Sundays I film this special video for my patrons and I never miss them. Even when I'm on vacation or doing anything, I have always put up that Patreon video. We are at number 259, I believe. Patreon video up there, haven't missed a beat. So, so please go check out my Patreon, it's very affordable. <laughs> Other than that, thank you very much for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again and have a really nice day. Bye bye.